నీటి అందు పుట్టి నీటినే తేలుచు నీటి అందడంగు నీటి బుడుగా నరుడే బుద్బుదంబు నారాయణుడే నీరు ఉన్నమాట తెలుపుచున్నమాట ద వాటర్ బబుల్ ఈజ్ బాన్ ఇన్ వాటర్ ఫ్లోట్స్ ఆన్ వాటర్ అండ్ అల్టిమేట్లీ బర్స్ అండ్ మర్జెస్ ఇన్ వాటర్ దిస్ వాటర్ బబుల్ ఈస్ మ్యాన్ అండ్ ద వాటర్ ఈజ్ లార్డ్ ఈజ్ ద గాడ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ద ట్రూత్ ట్రూత్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ద వెరీ ఫ్యాక్ట్ దట్ ఐ టెల్ యూ our existence in this world is only so much as a water bubble what does that mean one the temporary ness of it the ephemerality of our existence a water bubble however big it might be it cannot sustain itself forever as long as there is air in it it remains but the moment it bursts it goes back into water its true existence yet when it is present as a bubble of water it never thinks itself as water itself it thinks of itself as a separate existence from the very water from which it has been created and then all the reflections that happen on the water bubble they all seem to be true some of our children play with those bubbles they have one small toy like thing you keep blowing bubbles you see when the bubble comes out what does it do it reflects the whole world on it you can see the reflection of the tree the birds the flowers the buildings even your reflection you can see in the bubble of water but how long it's just a momentary existence the moment it bursts all the reflections disappear the whole world that seemed to be real on the surface of the bubble suddenly disappears in no time at all likewise our existence in this world is only so much so therefore mahakuru dhanajana yavana garvam హరతి నిమిషాత్ కాలాత్ సర్వం ఈయన మూమెంట్ టైమ్ కెన్ టేక్ అవ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ దట్ వీ హ్యావ్ ధన ద వెల్త్ దట్ వీ హ్యావ్ జన విత్ రిలేషన్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ యవ్వన దిస్ యూత్ఫుల్నెస్ ద యంగ్ ఏజ్ దట్ విల్ ఆల్సో డిసప్యూర్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ కెన్ గో అవే ఇన్ అ ట్రాయిస్ ఇన్ అ మూమెంట్ అండ్ దే ఫర్ ఓన్లీ సో మచ్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఇస్ టు బి గివెన్ టు అవర్ ఫిజికల్ ఎగ్జిస్టెన్స్ యాజ్ దట్ టు బి గివెన్ టు అ బబుల్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ yet the beauty of this existence is that it is born out of the lord's truth it is the very expression of the divinity that it is born from it is supported and sustained by the same divinity and the day it bursts it bur- merges into the same divinity so are we bound so are we free as we say however till we are a bubble of water filled with air of ego air of identity air of attachments air of the separation from water all the reflections of the world seem to appear real our wealth appears to be real our relations appear to be real our name and fame and position power authority everything appears to be real but the moment it bursts everything is gone in a moment and that is the beauty of this existence that it is so temporary yet it is so mesmerizing and so so tempting to believe in it and to live accordingly so the great sages and saints of the country our upanishads our scriptures have continuously reminded us of this temporariness and transience of all existence so while you exist as a separate entity from the divine how should you behave is the question should behave with this knowledge and understanding that this existence is temporary that everything that this bubble reflects is temporary it is there now it will be gone another time moment and so just live in this world with this idea that everything is only temporary so the good news is that even the troubles are temporary our difficulties are temporary our sorrows and setbacks are temporary they also will never last forever that is the beauty anityam asukam lokam imam prapya vajaswamam shri krishna says anityam the first quality of this existence is it is temporary asukam the second is it is full of misery only what appears to be joyful is not true joy because that joy will disappear in no time and be replaced by another problem another misery another sorrow so there is no end to it therefore when people come to me with trouble i tell them be happy troubles are temporary now the trouble times are there these will la- not last for long and immediately after this good times will come and when people come with good times and they are very happy i tell them don't be too happy because this also is temporary 
soon it will be replaced by some trouble and some problem so there is no reason for you to get excited when you have good times not there is a real reason for you to get depressed when you have bad times because both of them are temporary in this world that is the good part of the world that anityam that it is not forever all situations are passing clouds none of these remain forever knowing this and also knowing asukham there is no real pleasure there is no real joy in this world pain and pleasure pain and pleasure that's how it is like sun and moon like day and night like summer and winter there is pain and pleasure they alternate you have seen that ac current dc current you know ac current is there like this it alternates some point of time it's above zero sometimes below zero and fluctuates that is how this world is for some people it is too much of fluctuation some people it is little fluctuation depending on your spiritual progress so people who have too much of fluctuation too much voltage they give shocks to everybody around them because whenever they're happy they're so excited high voltage or oh, they go around <laughs> expressing their exuberance to everybody they celebrate it with parties and god knows how all and when the current turns the other way goes to the negative side they go into the depths of depression and they pull everybody along and make everybody miserable around them because of the high voltage fluctuations whereas a steadiness in the mind of those who are spiritually oriented even if fluctuations happen they are very they are more like dc currents very simple very straight they are not always fluctuating in positive and negative so that is more powerful the idea is that don't give too much importance to anything in the world that's the whole thing then you will say oh then we should not give importance to studies also we should not give importance to seva also i said yes if you do not give importance to your food and sleep then do not give importance to study and seva also but our problem is when it the dinner bell rings we are there first to appear on the scene when it comes to sleeping we are the first to snore and last to wake up but when it comes to education in anityam asukam lokam what is this kind of flawed philosophies is what is deteriorating the very fabric of our spiritual culture in india we take to the path of complacency and convenience when we have to work hard on our spirituality then anyway all this is maya how does it matter whether i realize god or i don't realize god at the end everything is god i know it when things go wrong in a certain way we simply say god's will bhagavant niche because we do not want to get involved and work hard to uplift the society or do anything for them idanta temporary kada everything is shashvatam uh, their hunger is a shashvatam their misery is a shashvatam i do not have to do anything many people take to this very escapist idea of uh, religion and philosophy they don't want to work hard so they find refuge in such lame ideas everything is temporary and nothing is permanent so what is there to do here why should i engage but the truth is that when it comes to their own problems and misery they want themselves to be prioritized then they are not willing to wait and think that this is all temporary and uh, not to be given attention to then everybody's attention should be on their problems this kind of flawed and uh, you know wrong ideas is what is spoiling the very idea of religion and spirituality in our country that is why time and again masters come to this world to set us right to give us the right kind of understanding yes all this is temporary no doubt no doubt this world is full of misery so there will be miserable people so some or the other if not physical or material misery they will have emotional misery intellectual misery social misery or spiritual misery something something will always make them miserable in this world because till there is desire there is misery you cannot escape that so this is the this is the way of the world some people take refuge in this fact so therefore we should not do anything why should we waste our time and energy doing any good also because good is also temporary as is bad but when the same bad happens to you can you think in the same way no then problem starts no it shouldn't have happened to us why god has been unkind to us we have done everything for god we have prayed to god worshiped god did this did that you count the list of things that you have been doing only to make your life comfortable and convenient our society needs a new understanding of spirituality religion and philosophy while in our heart of hearts we know the temporariness of everything yet we know the permanence of our existence as god the bubble may be temporary but the water with which the bubble is made is permanent in the sense the substratum 
the foundation is divinity and that is there in all and seeing that vinashyastu anvinashyattam the one who sees the indestructible self in the destructible world ya pashyati sa pashyati that person alone sees all others don't even see all others are just looking but they are not seeing truly so while we look at the world around us which is fluctuating which has some sad days some happy days here we must see the very substratum the fundamental basis of everything which is permanent which is divine so when we do this seva what should be our attitude how should we do seva when anybody comes i tell them think god only is coming in that form bhagwan is coming in some form or the other rahimdas says rahiman ih sansar mein sabse milie dhai kya jaane ke hi roop mein narayan mil jaye in this world meet everybody with great enthusiasm rush to them and greet them with joy because you do not know in which form bhagwan is coming narayan is coming in which form of the nara or nari we do not know so meet everybody with great joy with great enthusiasm because this might be a disguise that the lord has put on to meet you so i tell meet the people in the hospital be it patients be it doctors your colleagues sevadars volunteers everybody meet them meet them with great joy great happiness why there is god in them maybe this is the form that god has taken today to meet you because god otherwise is formless so today he has decided to meet you as a patient today he has decided to meet you as a volunteer as a colleague as somebody unknown a stranger we do not know in which form god is coming and meeting us and in what it wants to achieve what the divinity wants to achieve through these meetings and you know greetings so the idea is that when i go around and meet people i think like this see this is another manifestation of god and god has chosen to manifest himself in this form to do some work of his which is his plan which is his design so when we meet people we always meet with joy because that is also divinity manifesting yes that existence is temporary the position is temporary the authority is temporary i understand all that but the very substratum foundation the very nirguna that has taken the saguna sakara rupa not just in temples but in society in the streets that divinity is something that we have to strive to see but then we will see we you know, you know all these theoretically fundamentally everything we know now paravidya has taken care that everybody knows all the basics of sanatana dharma that everything is divine sarvam isha vasi everything is isha animate inanimate everything we have understood but why are we not able to experience it is the question because that air is there inside the bubble that air that i exist i am somebody i am something all these qualities that we put on all the reflections that we have put on that is what is not allowing us to see the reality of our existence as the very water so what should you get rid of ego is that's the whole whole th- essence of spirituality is to get rid of ego if you are born crying koham koham most of the children they cry if you carefully listen that's crying koham koham in their own language if you cannot listen try to listen but the idea is that they come crying to the world why because they are lost they don't know where again oh once again are here here and we are back into this miserable world anitya masukam lokam so they think like that and they cry and they ask who am i this time last time i was something before that i was something else someone else now what i am who i am they cry koham koham because the moment the child cries koham immediately somebody appears on the scene the mother the father the grandfather uncle cousins friends oh your name is so and so your father is so and so your mother is so and so your grandfather was so and so your mother grandmother was so and so and then when you grow up you will become so and so they have already decided before it's born look at the misery of the child he's still crying who am i why am i here after all and we have already said you will be a doctor why because there is nobody who has been a doctor in our family well that's the great family that you have nobody could become a doctor how would he become somebody was like this somebody's father was boy was crying my father wants me to become an is officer i said that's a good thing become an is officer but i am not capable of becoming an is officer i know i don't have the capacity i want to be a sports person i said then ask your father then he said but my father says that because nobody was an is officer he is only a clerk in some government office so my son at least should be an is officer then you i told you go and talk to your father and tell him father i am your son only right you are sure yes of course you are father when you could not become an is officer how will i become an is you should tell that because i am your son i have only your capacity 
therefore i cannot you are a clerk i may be senior clerk <laughs> please don't expect me but people the moment a baby is born cries who am i before even explaining anything they tell you are going to be so and so they have decided they have decided there is nothing more left to be discussed than decided so when the baby grows and grows in a good atmosphere understands the truth of life and understands that it wants to do something other than what the parents wanted to do then they call it a rebellious baby disobedient baby uncultured baby it's not true it's not true i have seen many people who forcibly became doctors but they were not happy becoming doctors they were not never wanting to become doctors but their parents you know now they have quit mbbs because naturally uh, now they, do, they are not in the control of their parents they are already married and now they don't want to listen to anybody so after taking government's resources taking time of the hospitals and uh, you know my energy of all their professors i do not know how many how many patients on the way because they were never happy doctors at the end they are now change their jobs and now they're learning coding or something ai or something like that and they have nothing to do with medicine anymore or they have gone and become is officers i was leading a list of people newspaper had come no karnataka produces the maximum number of is officers who are originally doctors they were mbbs students who have become is officers and i asked what is the connection between the two there is no connection because they never wanted to be mbbs doctors but they have occupied all the mbbs seats and denied somebody because they're brilliant they're intelligent they could have used it for anything else they have denied the poor good students who want to be medicine students by occupying their seats and now what they are doing after finishing all the mbbs they are going becoming software engineers or something else or some youtubers and vloggers and all kinds of things why i am trying to tell you all this again and again is that so we are all born yes temporary but during this temporary existence we all have a role to play and that role has been given to us by god and that role has already been defined for us by divinity and how do i know i am in that role or i am in some other role your heart should feel happy when you wake up every day you should feel that i am happy doing what i am doing yes you may get tired physically exhausted mentally exhausted also but deep down in your heart of hearts you are never miserable not one day of life is sad in this asukam lokam also you are able to live with sukham because deep inside you resonate with what you are doing the music boys are there the music girls are there they are studying music they are happy singing it's a different matter whether others are happy or not but they are happy singing and playing and enjoying their music because they have found the connection between what they are and what they are meant to do here this is what somebody asked a question in coimbatore what is the what is the secret of happiness you, know, you say happiness comes and it's like a butterfly the more you chase the more it goes away the more you wait the more it comes to you so what is the secret of happiness i said all kinds of stories have we have heard about happiness but to me happiness is when your thought word and deed are in harmony that's when you are happy more than what you think or feel what you say and what you do everything is in synchronization you are not different thought you don't have a different thought different word different deed everything is in harmony everything has integrity that's when the happiness begins in life now that grows manifolds as you keep doing what you love to do but it begins with harmony of thought word and deed so if if any of you want to live happily in this otherwise unhappy world the only option is please align your thoughts words and actions now it does not mean that if your thoughts are bad cruel and unkind your words should also follow and deed should also follow no that's not the right way you should be able to purify your thoughts with the company of good people speak words in line in tune with your thoughts and act in this world any time this is my personal experience narsim murthy ji has said so much in the last 12 years has happened how is all has happened who tells what to do next who tells that kodaikanal campus should open yes the judge came and requested but like that people request so many things from me it doesn't mean that i go around doing everything something is divinely driven when you are in heart your thought word and deed are in tune the divinity flows unobstructed through you because you have found it find it found somebody who is completely aligned completely in tune with himself or herself that's when divinity takes over and then everything happens as if by in a clockwise precision in a, in a magical way nobody knows what's coming next but everybody is comfortable doing it why because divinity is driving the whole thing many people ask during this trip also how how did you even conceive these projects what made you think i said right if i give them the straight honest spiritual answer i do not know then they will all think that uh, you know i'm trying to hide some big secret 
which I do not want to share with them. But I told them very humbly, see, we pray to God. God is the one who drives and does everything. You submit yourself as an instrument of God. Nimitta matram, bhava savya sachin. Become an instrument of mine and everything flows. Still they can't believe because it sounds so simple. And how to explain that all truths are very simple. It's, just, it's the untruth which is complicated, which needs explanation. Truth is one line. It's all God. That is the truth. Tell the untruth. No, we have a big trust and then we have a big committee. We research about the problems of the society and then we come up with the new ideas of projects and plan a financial model with sustainability. This is all lie. The truth is, it's God's will and God alone knows how it will happen. We are here just to execute God's will. Why? Because we have completely harmonized our thought, word and action. Our thought is filled with God. Our words are filled with God. Our hands are filled with God. There is nothing else that we have of I in me. The moment we have I in ourselves, God, that Sai, I say, that, that gets obstructed. So the whole purpose of spirituality is to know that everything is so temporary. So where is the question of developing ego and attachment to anything over there? You know, if to play with the bubble toy, you may pay 10 rupees and buy a plastic toy and play. But you, can you sell those bubbles to somebody for 10 rupees? Say, I here, one bubble for you. He said, what are you talking? This bubble is not going to exist tomorrow, not even next moment. There is no value to that bubble. Only entertainment value is there. That is how this world is. Everything is just temporary. So don't put too much of your energy and time in developing this unnecessary ego. What ego? From what? For, from where this ego actually even comes? Only ignorance can lead to arrogance. Ignorant about the truth of this world and your truth can make you arrogant. You think you own everything. All the reflections of the bubble is a world that you own. None of this is real. None of this is true. The more you contemplate on this, the more you feel comfortable in doing things for others and not doing for yourself. The more you realize this truth, the more selfless you will become. Not, this idea of hoarding, hiding, stealing, all this will disappear because you will think, what, I am hiding bubbles and telling them tomorrow I have got 100 bubbles in my basket. What nonsense is that? Because it's not going to exist tomorrow, not even for the next moment. So this is what we are collecting, you know, Bubbles in you know, temporary things in the world and feeling so happy about it, so so proud and so and those who are fools and yes men around us, they are also praising us. Oh, wonderful! You achieved so much. You made so much of money. You've gone to the next position. You are so powerful. We also go in that glory, temporary glory. It's so stupid. It's like a child arguing with the other child. You know, I can blow a bigger bubble. These chewing gum bubbles they make. You see, the full time they are practicing blowing the chewing gum bubble. Mouth is paining, teeth are aching, but they'll go on and on. Children compete like this. I have blown a bigger bubble than yours. This is that, that silly it appears to God when he looks at the world. How silly this whole thing is. How people are getting entangled and attached to these silly ideas. That's when masters, with their compassion, they come to the world to say, please don't waste your energy and time doing all these ignorant things. Concentrate on the truth, focus on the truth so that you feel happy and you make everybody happy around you. That's all it is. So all these institutions are just what you can, what to say, a platform, an opportunity for everyone to realize this truth of the impermanence of everything and the permanence of God and to find happiness in this otherwise so-called miserable world. And that happiness begins with aligning your thought, words and actions. Whatever your heart says, that is what you should do. In these 12 years, it has been my experience as a person also. Whenever I was advised by somebody against my understanding or conviction, that no, 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 this is practical, this is how we should do it. Deep down, I felt this is not in sync with my heart. This is not my heart feels. And I could feel that discomfort. But to honor the person because of the seniority or their you know position or whatever their emotion and stature. Sometimes, you know, I, have, I would say, yes, okay, we will go ahead, we we'll do that. But let me tell you, none of those projects succeeded. Somewhere or the other, they'll go and get stuck. Why? Because that is not divine will. That is individual will, which thinks itself as divine will. Because there is ego, there is sense of attachment. I asked everybody, when I asked myself, we come up with so many new projects, new ideas, every other day there is a new initiative. I ask myself, how do I feel inside when such a thing is spoken or such a thing is said or done? How do I feel inside? If inside is calm like the day portion, I know this all is going to work for because this is divine will. But if the inside is you know, stormy like an ocean which is struck by a lightning and storm, 
you can feel the restlessness inside you can feel the emotional turbulence about the fears of its failure or about excitement of its success all these when comes i know that this is not divine will somewhere the whole thing ocean has got churned with my own emotions that's avoid and whenever we have taken a decision under such compulsions because of somebody else who has enforced it upon us because of some other pressure none of this has succeeded somewhere the other will go down the line and stop because it was not divine will there was so much of anxiety there was so much of heat inside it was not a calm and cool venture so once in once in a while you have to keep checking whatever you are doing how do you feel inside now small issues may come as i said little flu voltage fluctuations will happen because day to day we have to work but deep inside how you feel deep inside you feel calm you feel comfortable you feel steady then you know that you are following the divine will because nothing inside you got disturbed on the surface some movements are there but the moment inside or outside everything is churned you're not getting sleep you're not able to eat food you're not able to talk to anybody you're not able to you know smile then you know that everything has gone in uh, haywire within because your ego has taken over and the ego is now the reason why you're not happy but miserable even in a beautiful spiritual place doing spiritual things because somewhere the ego has crept in and that is the acid test we are in this world to execute the divine will divinity has brought us out of itself like a bubble that comes out of water has kept us for some time for a purpose and it will take us back in no time whenever it wills our temporary existence should not be given too much of importance such big plans when i grow up i'll become this i'll do that and after that i'll do this and after that i will do that and then i'll retire like this and i will settle down in this place how much planning and you know how much energy and time and how much excitement you know that this is all ego nothing else when you are truly divine you will flow like a river unobstructed and even if this there is an obstruction you will find a way around and flow there is no struggle the moment there is struggle in everything that you are not saying hard work don't mix the two hard work will be there but struggle will not be there there is no sense of struggle that is when you know that you are following the divine will the moment you get excited your head gets heated up your heart is all you know stormy and you cannot sleep you cannot get up you cannot talk you cannot smile you know that your ego has taken over and you're giving too much importance to whatever work you have taken up and it is getting you know contaminated with your individual ego it is not the divine will that's when you should withdraw immediately with no shame in withdrawing at that point even if you have gone wrong no no problem in saying sorry and saying i did wrong i think my ego took over i caused some damage and losses but I, now i realize that it is not the right thing don't feel hesitant to say sorry and withdraw from that because that is that way you will be saving much more damage just to fulfill your ego you cannot go on <laughs> driving on the wrong road sometimes it happens we took the wrong road and somebody tells you that you are on the wrong road first we ignore then slowly we saw the see the gps say yes looks like i am on the wrong road now how to tell everybody inside the car that i am driving on the wrong road so we keep quite hoping that somewhere i'll take a turn nobody will notice and i'll come back to the right road but never happens then you are always on the wrong road so rather say yes i have made a mistake i think my ego took over this is not what god wants accept it and move then you change your course and divinity comes back again and how do you know whether divinity is happy with you you should feel happy within yourself should feel joyful within yourself you should feel peaceful within yourself and your emotions will be temporary whether it is excitement whether it is some worry whether it is anger whether it is some uh, any attachment all this will be temporary it won't last at all so that is the beauty of spirituality it doesn't tell you to abandon the world and run away because it's temporary is full of misery now where do you go even if you abandon it where will you go how can a rabbit run away from the earth from which he borrowed some money it's not possible we have to live in this world as long as divine wills but live correctly correct living is real living with this knowledge that everything is temporary and only so much importance should be given to dana jana yavana all that not more than that and two while we are existing in the world let us exist exist simply to express the divinity which is within us and when with that divinity will express it fully only when your thought word and deeds are in harmony trikarna shuddhi is there only then divinity ex expresses itself fully otherwise it gets obstructed so two points only from today one remember constant constantly smaranityam anichyatam as shankaracharya says remember what is temporary and what is permanent Bul bu the bubble is temporary the reflections are temporary the water is permanent all the achievements all the great things that we experience in life all these are temporary 
divinity alone is permanent first second how do i live in this world then harmonize your thought word and actions that's where happiness become that, that is how asukham lokam become sukha lokam when you start experiencing the joy within by divinity takes over and expresses itself through you and whenever in your heart of hearts you feel uncomfortable you feel unaligned you feel uh, you know that something is not right listen to that because god is trying to tell you and even if you have gone some distance no harm in saying sorry taking a u turn and going to the right road never go on doing that just because somebody wants it somebody said it no i have sometimes some student as i told even if i tell something to you and you feel within that it is not what you feel like doing at that moment harmonize your thought word and action maybe this is not the right time for you to do what i am asking you to do but then accept and then move on don't make yourself miserable and me also miserable because neither you will do what i am trying to say, tell you to do why because you are not ready to do it you are still evolving you are still understanding we have some other plans and ambitions go ahead and do that but then don't do it here because this is not going to help you this is going to make everybody miserable so this is my advice to the students also while i tell you about all these things not everybody is ready for it i am trying to ready you by giving you so many inputs by telling you continuously about the importance of spirituality leading a life of peace and joy not the life of ambition and uh, you know plenty but a life of peace and harmony i'm trying to explain these values to you so that even if you don't un understand this at your age hopefully some point in time you'll be able to appreciate it and if it happens very soon then good for you because then you can quickly align and as i said tell you there is no better place on earth than this place to uh, do what god wants you to do this is the only place where nobody will stop you from doing god's will so that is the beauty of this place but some children as they grow ambitions come they listen from here and there they go on social media and come out with new new ideas and then they feel that that is not in alignment with what swami is asking me to do i want to do something else go ahead go ahead as feel as long as you feel peace doing that maybe that's all is meant for you at this point of time maybe the kaveri has to split into two and meet again later let it be let us not force each other that will make everything smooth and nice it be happy for you happy for everybody over here so please think correctly that is this advice to the growing children not the small children they listen to everything but as they grow they develop personality an idea of their own they listen here from here and there then they develop an idea what they want to do with their life fine if you cannot find that surrender at this point in time if you cannot find a, your alignment with this value of the system or the education or the culture here no problem maybe you are not yet ready for it maybe you have still a little distance maybe at some point in time later but let us as i said even if you part part on a good note part with gratitude part with kindness so that when we meet again we don't have to feel uncomfortable looking at each other looking into each other's eyes so even if you part ways part ways very nicely on a good note comfortably and in a friendly way so that whenever the life brings us back again because world is small very small surely you will cross your paths at that point of time you can look into each other's eyes and still give a smile and not shy away and look the other way and embarrass each other so at least for that say it's no more about having theory and not having it executed completely in practice so wherever there are gaps wherever there is misalignment or non alignment or you know deviation please arrest it now and here do not wait for too long and when we find there is no alignment of some parents some students some staff some volunteers with our system of education do not have to carry any judgmental feelings do not have to you know pass verdicts simply part ways in an amicable way and do it early than later what's the point in living a miserable life every day doing something that your heart does not want you to do maybe it is not yet time for you the billions of people are there not everybody is in mudanalli right they are also doing their own thing they are also going through their own paths so if any one of you feels like that it is better that you recognize and acknowledge that and make corrections now and here and do it in a nice and happy way so that i don't have to give very strong discourses it's not necessary we can talk we can understand we can execute what we need to do and we can even part ways on a sweet note so that as i said when life brings us together again at some point in time we don't have to embarrass feel embarrassed we can still meet and greet and talk and smile at each other so think like that especially the children who are in the final year ug or pg this is the first advice to them please 
look inside find your peace find your harmony and if it's in harmony your inside harmony is in alignment with the outside harmony over here continue if you do not feel like that if you feel there is something else waiting for you whichever way your understanding has come i do not know what has made you think maybe that's how you are born to do please take a call but don't wait till your graduation post graduations to make a decision that i do not want i've been telling graduating from this university is a proud privilege it should be really something that you must deserve because you have aligned yourselves completely with the with the mission with the vision of this university and the institutions if there is any gap and you are not able to bridge that gap it is better leave on a good note on a happy note on a cordial note than you know waiting till the end and then creating confusion and misery for yourselves so i understand where you come from and some of you may feel the other, another way i'm perfectly okay with that i have no grudges and no complaints but make sure that whatever you do you do it on a friendly and a cordial way limit may your parents also understand this system and vision if somehow they are not able to fully appreciate no problem maybe it's not the place for them maybe it's not time is not the time for them maybe at some other point in time they will understand it better so part ways on a cordial note this is what and i have given clear instructions to all the chairpersons across the institutions to please find any gaps if there are and co cover it close it now and if it's not possible part ways but part ways very cordially and so that everybody is happy at the end so think like this find this harmony of thought word and deed that alone can give you joy and happiness and everybody's harmony is not the same this is what makes me happy is not necessarily what makes you happy everybody has their own ways of doing things at the end we all will meet at the peak we all will meet at the ocean we all will meet together at the end but on the way we may take different routes i appreciate that also and acknowledge that but please find the route that makes you happy see that is very important then in, in this temporary and miserable world also you can find some happiness and satisfaction live your life like that that's what i wanted to convey many blessings i will see you again